Hey everyone, welcome to part two of our conditional probability video. In the previous video, we looked at defining the different spaces on things like Venn diagrams, for example, and exploring what we mean by conditional probability and how this changes a certain sample space when calculating some kind of probability. Now, we also defined some notation. So, we looked at these ideas of, for example, the probability of one thing given another event. And we're going to be doing all this now. Now that you have a good background into how we can go about these types of questions, we're just going to do some practice questions now. And we're going to be looking at both Venn diagrams and two-way tables, which are two of the methods and methods we learnt about in the previous series, in last year's probability series, about how we can represent data and information to calculate probabilities when there's multiple elements involved, when we're looking at measuring two different things at once. Okay, so I have a Venn diagram here, and we're going to try to do a couple of questions here. Now, using this Venn diagram, I want to find the probability of getting A, the probability of getting A and B. So these are a couple of warm up questions similar to what we did from last year's content. And now in the last two questions, we are going to introduce once again, this idea of conditional probability and look how we can calculate that. Okay, so now this this information could be anything so this could be for example students in a class or like students sitting together at lunchtime and some brought apples as a fruit to school and the others brought bananas now like i said the two bits of the venn diagram can represent either uh we can represent any points of information we want to okay so we're given that three people have just apples. So that's this section here. We have that four people have just bananas. So that's this sort of cutoff section here. So in other words, pink is apples, only apples, so no bananas. The green section is just bananas, no apples. And we have an overlapping section in the middle, which is apples and bananas. And we have this zero outside as well. And this is our neither. So anything that sits outside our Venn diagram represents neither. In this case, neither apples nor bananas. So there are no students here that had no apples or no bananas. We're just looking at this Venn diagram here. Okay, now to find the probability of apples, we just need to find similar to, to what we did last year, we have a total of three plus two plus four elements in my Venn diagram. So I have a total number of outcomes of nine here. And as we did before, we just want to pick which ones had apples. Now, the ones that we can uh, the ones that we can include in apples, that can be the students that have just apples all the students that have apples and bananas. In both cases, they still have apples. So we have a total of five students out of nine that brought apples to school. Now for this next bit, the wording here is important. Remember we looked in last year's content about the significance of this and. Now, when we look at the probability of having A and B, or apples and bananas, we are looking at the overlapping section in the middle. These are the students that have both. So, once again, we're going to take my same, my same sample space. So, my total amount of outcomes is going to be 3 plus 2 plus 4, because this is just a regular probability question. So, that gives me 9. And the students that had both apples and bananas, that's going to be two. That is our intersecting bit in the middle here. Okay, so hopefully we're not having too much trouble with this. This is a revision of the things we did when we first looked at Venn diagrams in the year nine content. 
But now we are moving on to the ideas we looked at in the previous video, these conditional probabilities here. Now, just a, a quick reminder of what these mean. This means the probability of A and this vertical line in the middle means given B. So that means the probability that students had apples given that they also had bananas. So an even longer way we can write this, just so we can really get our head around the concept, the probability that students had apples given they had or brought bananas. Bananas to school. I know I've made this really long-winded, but we want to really break down this informa information because sometimes this type of notation is a little bit tricky. So we really want to, in the early days, we really want to understand what this is asking us. So let's go back to our Venn diagram and I'm going to get rid of these highlighted bits here in order to answer some questions. So remember, this second element, the condition here, this is a given the condition that these students brought bananas. So we are looking at out of the students that brought bananas, how many br brought apples or what is the probability that the students that brought bananas also brought apples. So my condition, my conditional probability changes the denominator here. It's no longer going to be nine because we're just considering a case. So we're measuring a probability A given that we're looking at the students that brought bananas. So that's why I've circled this part here. So a total, my total number of students here is going to be four plus two. So the total students that brought bananas. So I have a denominator of six. And also out of the students that brought bananas, which ones brought apples? So we can see that we're not including this bit over here because these students didn't have bananas. They just had apples. So this violates the condition. We're instead looking at the middle portion here. We're looking for the students out of all the students that brought bananas, that's six of them, how many brought apples or what is the probability that the students who brought bananas also brought apples as well. So we are looking for a probability of two over six. So the probability of A given B. So given B, given that we're looking at students who brought bananas six, what's the probability that students from that group brought apples? So that's gonna be two students out of six, the two being the overlapping section here. And we can also simplify this to one third, but the main idea that I want to just drive home in this video is what all of these sections mean, what, what my conditional probability means and how I can navigate this with a Venn diagram question. Okay, now let's rub this out again and reset. We have a new condition here. We're looking for the probability that students had bananas given they had apples. The probability of B given A. So given that we're just looking at the students that brought apples, how many students is this? Well, that's five. So five is my new sample space, my denominator. Given a student had an apple, so these five, how many brought a, whoops, how many brought a banana to school as well? So here we are looking at 
the overlap. So out of the five possible students we had, two of those brought bananas as well. So we're always looking at this intersection point when we're looking of my Venn diagram, when we are looking at conditional probability. So I have as a probability, that's going to be two students that brought bananas out of the five. So my conditional probability, once again, it's all about changing the sample space and looking at the condition, something given another thing, what part of my Venn diagram is my given talking about? Now, that's going to be one of these circles. So we're considering how many total students, for example, here had apples, and then how many of them also had bananas. So we get two out of a total of five, and that's going to be our probability. Okay, let's have a look at a two-way table question. This is gonna be our last example for the day. Because two-way tables and Venn diagrams, they represent the same information for us. It just comes down to what you prefer. But by the end of this course, we need to know how to interpret both. Okay, so let's say for this, I have, I have 15 hockey players. I'm selecting from a group of 15 hockey players. And out of these 15, 13 played on the field. and seven sat on the bench. And finally, five both played and sat on the bench. So five both played and sat on bench. Okay, so I want to convey this information on a two-way table. So if you remember, we drew these like so. Um, we have this and we have So let's say that let's call Uh, okay, let's do that. So it is a really annoying to draw. So um, if it's taking me a bit of time and it's taking you a bit of time, just know you're not alone here. Okay, now let's say, let's say the students that played, we'll call that P. And the students that were benched, we'll call that B. Or the, sorry, the players, not, not students here. We're looking at just a group of hockey players. Um, okay, and if you remember from how we construct these, these two-way tables, we have a section that's playing and not playing, and we have benched and not benched. And then we have our totals in these boxes here. Okay. All right, so let's center this here. We want to construct in part A of this question, a Venn diagram, sorry, not a Venn diagram, a two-way table showing all of this information. So let's just consider all the things we have. So we have that five both played and sat on the bench. So we're looking at the overlap of playing and benching. So we can put our five here. Now, we, had, uh, we have that seven players sat on the bench. Now, out of these seven players that sat on the bench, five played and were on the bench. So we wanna find how many were on the bench but didn't play. We wanna find now these two bits of information. Now, we have that there was a total of seven on the bench, so we're gonna put our total on this side here. And then we can say, well, how many players were benched but didn't play to make up from going from five to seven? And pretty easy arithmetic here. We just have two. So we have five players that got benched and played, two players that benched got benched but didn't play, and seven all together. So 
these sections here and these sections here are my totals. And the crux of the information, sort of like the Venn diagram bits, are going to sit in here. Okay, now we have that 15 players played all together. Now, there's it's a bit tricky because we're trying to interpret all these different bits of information and find where the relevant points go. So we're gonna take this nice and slow. So we have a total of 13 players that played on the field. So I'm looking at the ones that played here and my total is gonna go down here because I'm looking at this column gives me the ones that played. So I can pop a 13 down here and then now I just want to find which of these, I know that five of them played and got benched. How many played but didn't get benched? So played the whole game. And that's going to be the difference between 13 and 5. So in the same way I got this 2 here by considering the totals, I also got this 8 in the same way. And now it just comes down to um, the neither section. Now doesn't give us anything here so we can assume that there were zero players that got benched and we can also figure that out by oh sorry zero players that didn't play or didn't get benched also think about when you when you play any sport you're either going to be playing or you're either going to be on the bench so there's going to be no one doing neither that's in the team and we can also see 5 plus 8 plus 2, all these sections inside here, they all add up, the things that make up all of the roles in the team, this adds up to 15 anyway. So I'm given that I have 15 hockey players, and then therefore there's got to be zero that didn't play or didn't get benched, because I already have 15 made up by this 5, 2, 8. So, that means that I can just fill out the rest of my table. Now, my, my players that didn't play here, so this column down the bottom, I have 2 plus 0, and I have 2 down here. And this row on my two-way table, I have 8 that played but didn't get benched, 0 that didn't get benched or didn't play. Adding those together, I get 8. And then now, no matter what way I go, whether I add up these two numbers or these two numbers, I'm going to get my total of 15. Which is what I was given up the top. I have 15 hockey players all together. Now, the trickiest part about these particular two-way tables is just drawing them the first time. Once you have it drawn, it becomes a lot easier to work with. Now we're gonna um, we're going to calculate some probabilities. So we want to find the probability of selecting a play out of this fifteen that was sat on the bench only. So here we're looking at the total sample space here because this isn't a conditional probability. So my bench only, I have a total of 15 people and I want to select on my Venn diagram which ones here were only on the bench. So on the bench, let's do this in a different color, on the bench but didn't play. That is what we mean by bench only. You were only on the bench. You did not play, you were only on the bench. And I can see here that I have two as the overlapping bit between these two here. So I can write this probability as two over 15 for the probability that the players only sat on the bench. Okay, now we're going into our conditional probability now. So we have the probability that the players were benched given that they played. Okay, 
So once again, I'm just going to write this down here. The probability that they got benched given they played. So like we did on in the Venn diagrams, we're looking for the total amount of, uh, of players here that played. And then from that, we're looking at the overlap section of those that got benched here. So we wanna find on my Venn diagram, what is the bit that tells me the total number of players that played. So this particular column here, and this is where two-way tables can be advantageous as well. I have in this column, the, the total players that played. I have the players that played and were on the bench, the overlap. And I have, which is five, and the players that played and didn't get benched. So only played as eight. And those two add up to 13 down the bottom. So if I'm looking at just as in this condition, the new sample space I'm looking at is the total number of players that played. I can also find this by looking at this particular uh, dot point here. 13 players played on the field. So when I bring in my conditional probability, I get that my new sample space, my new denominator is going to be 13 because I'm considering the ones that played. My new sample space is just the players that played. And now I'm finding the probability of the people that were benched to answer this question, given that they played. So out of these 13, how many were on the bench? And once again, like we did, saw with the Venn diagrams, that is gonna be our overlapping section here. The players that played and the players that were benched. So I have here five over 13. So to find the probability that they were benched given that they played, I wanna consider how the conditional probability changes my sample space. So it changes it from a total of 15 and narrows it down to 13 because we're looking at just the players that played or this dot point up here. And then out of those 13, how many were benched also? And that's going to be the overlap, B and P. Same as this middle section on our Venn diagram. Now, some people prefer two-way tables. A lot of people like Venn diagrams because it's just easy to see visually. But hopefully, we're getting into the, the state where we're feeling more comfortable with both here. Now, for our last question, we want to find the probability that a player was, uh, that the player played given that they were benched. Okay. Now, once again, let's write this the long way just while, we, while we're getting comfortable. So probability that they played given they were benched. Okay. So once again, I'm considering the new sample space. I'm just looking out of all of this information, all the numbers here, I'm just looking at the students, the total, I keep saying students, the total players that were benched. Now, I can get that from up here, get the seven sat on the bench, or I can see from my two-way table that my total players that were benched is given by this row. The ones that benched and were benched and played, the ones that were benched and didn't play, those add up to seven here. So that is my new sample space. So I get seven on the denominator. So out of these seven that were benched, how many of those played? 
Well, we are looking at the overlap again. Out of these seven that played, we're looking for those that were benched and those that played as well. So that gives us the overlap here. So I have five over seven as my probability. And you can see when we when we look at these, some of you may have, may have noticed a pattern. When we look at these types of conditional probabilities, notice how the numerator was the same here. And the numerator was also the same here because we have the same over the same number in the overlapping section. So no matter which way we go, I'm going to get a constant overlap, which will be my numerator when I look at conditional probabilities. But this is how we can apply the information we learned from the last video to questions involving both two way tables and Venn diagrams. But thank you so much for joining me in this video and I'll see you next time.